What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Fellow Show. My name is Kyle. Tonight, July 22nd, Monday evening here, I'm going to be continuing my 32-team projection series. We are just starting the NFC South. I covered the Tampa Bay Buccaneers already tonight. That video should be out on the channel. And right now, I am going to dive into the Carolina Panthers, the 2024 Carolina Panthers. What we do here, if you guys are new and haven't seen any of these videos, I open up with the 2023 review of the team, and then we move on to the 24 projections uh, looking at quarterback, running back, receiver, and tight end. And I'll open up my projection document, which you guys can check out, uh, access it at thefantasyfellowship.com. We got the membership going, 10 bucks a month. You guys can get in and get all the data, all the rankings, and all kinds of articles and advanced things as well. So highly recommend checking that out. And then uh, before we begin, I, I'm going to post in the comments the the playlist, the 32-team projection playlist. I've already covered a ton of teams here, but I mean, it's July 22nd. Training camps are, are, are beginning. I need to get these out of my system here. I need to get finished with the, I guess I finished the NFC South, and then I got to finish the AFC and MC West. So I'm almost done trying to get these knocked out so we can move on to better content. But let's begin. Starting with a 2023 review, uh, the Frank Reich 2023 season did not go very well. 2-15 and 15 for the Carolina Panthers. Um, Bryce Young, number one pick. It looked bad. It, like, it looked really bad. Bryce Young, man, under 60% completion percentage. He played, what, 15 games. Andy Dalton saw a couple games here and there. Uh, not even 3,000 yards passing. 5.46 yards per attempt. 11 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Uh, I was happy with the rushing numbers, though. 253 rushing yards out of Bryce Young. Would have liked to see some rushing touchdowns. But, man, I just it, it was not a great rookie season. You know, we saw C.J. Stroud, and we've seen other rookies come out swinging. I thought Bryce Young might be able to do that, uh, but it was just – it was bad all, all around. And, the, the, you know, looking at the running game, the Panthers gave Miles Sanders a bunch of money, ended up being Chuba Hubbard was the better back. And now that's looking like a really bad contract here. Uh, Chuba Hubbard looked actually okay, 238 carries, 902 yards, about 3.8 yards per carry, five touchdowns. And he was pretty good as a receiver as well. Uh, but it looks like Sanders is on his way out. Uh, we'll see Chuba Hubbard mix in with the starters this year. And then the receiving group, man, they set they set Bryce Young up to fail, I think. I think I'm still holding out hope that Bryce Young can turn things around. But you give him a, what, age 32, 33, Adam Thielen, uh, you know, an aging DJ Chark, Jonathan Mingo, who they didn't scheme up properly, and he's not he's not the, the, the best round two pick they could have made. Uh, and then Terrace Marshall, who's just kind of not been able to do things. So the receiver group was was very poor, maybe the poorest in the league. And then you look at the tight end, like, Tommy Tremble, Hayden Hurst, Stephen Sullivan, Ian Thomas, Giovanni Ricci. There's there was no playmakers on this team besides an aging Adam Thielen. So no wonder Bryce Young didn't have a great year. I think if you look at the numbers across the board, like they threw the ball like garbage. They they ran the ball fine. They ran it okay, and that's something to build on in 2024. But I mean, 13 passing touchdowns, 20 rushing or seven rushing touchdowns to get them to 20 touchdowns total. Like, this was a year to forget. And I'm hoping this is the, the bottom point of the Bryce Young career arc. So not much to say, man, about 2023. It sucked. It really sucked. But now we're bringing in we'll, – we'll, let's let's get into the 2024 talk here. The hiring of Dave Canales I think is pretty cool. Uh, he, he's been very, very successful the last few years. Let's look at what he's done. He was Tampa Bay's offensive coordinator last year, and he kind of resurrected Baker Mayfield's career. And I think that's a really good sign – uh, as to what he could do with Bryce Young. And then <clears throat> even before Baker Mayfield, he's been with Seattle since 2010. He's been their wide receiver coach from 2010 to 2017, upgraded to QB coach, then the passing game coordinator, quarterbacks coach in 2022, which was the year Geno Smith blew up and had a great year. That was their first year without Russell Wilson, and Geno Smith had an amazing season. So you're looking at the last two years of Dave Canales being – resurrections for Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield. So I, I think it's a good fit for what Bryce Young uh, offers, and we'll see if this can can be what, you know, makes him look like a 101 pick uh, from the NFL draft. So I like the head coaching call. Uh, but let's talk about the quarterbacks, Bryce Young, Andy Dalton. You know, I still don't think it's going to be like a, a elite QB1 fantasy football season for Bryce Young, uh, but I do like what they did. Uh, they, they, they added some weapons for Bryce Young, and I think that's what was needed. So uh, just the top-of-the-line projection for me on Bryce Young, uh, 
550 passing attempts. I have him just at 64.55% completion percentage, about 3,700 passing yards. Still under seven yards per attempt at 6.86, but 20 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 275 rushing yards, and a rushing touchdown. So I, I expect all of his numbers to improve from last year because they were they were pretty bad, uh, to say the least. Uh, and you're looking at a, a better cast of weapons. They talk about adding adding Jonathan Brooks, Deontay Johnson, and Xavier Leggett. Those are three big talents at the at the positions that they just didn't have last year. Uh, they still need a tight end, but they did draft. Uh, they, they added Jatamian Sanders, too. So they, they added weapons at each level of this offense. And hopefully just some more continuity with Bryce Young and some of the guys there and some of the offensive line. can you, there, there should be a built-in step forward with that alone. But when you're adding talent at all four levels of the offense, or I guess all three levels with running back, receiver, and tight end, it, it should, in theory, be better for everything across the board. So I still don't think I have Bryce Young as like a like a top 10, top 12 QB. That's not happening this year. It may be, but I, I have him as QB 23. So I think for super flex leagues, that's where he's going to look interesting as a low-end QB 2, you know, kind of your third QB on your roster. And he's just going way too cheap in drafts. He's being drafted uh, around like pick 200 in best ball leagues right now. I think he's the ideal, you know, Swing for the upside on a, on a huge second-year trajectory. He's got a lot going for him with this talent infused and Dave Canales now uh, leading the team. So I'm slightly optimistic on the Carolina Panthers as a whole, and a lot of it does stem off Bryce Young, but they've done a much better job preparing Bryce Young for year two than they did in year one. Um, so I, where I'm taking – I'm not taking – you're not drafting Bryce Young in a one QB league. You know, he's going to be on the waiver wire. You're drafting Bryce Young in a super flex league as a QB two or three. And you're drafting Bryce Young in best balls as your two or three. And I, I think, you know, if everything hits here and, you know, say he say he throws for 4,000 passing yards this year, say say Xavier Leggett is a huge hit and he, you know, goes for like 900 yards, say Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson's one of the best route runners and, and guys at getting open in the league. What if, what if he just blows up and helps keep this offense on track and efficient? What if Jonathan Brooks is just a really good player and, they, and you know, they have a great one-two punch with Brooks and Hubbard? There's a lot of what-ifs here that could launch Bryce Young, you know, maybe QB 15, 16, 17, and that would be best-case scenario. But I'm drafting Bryce Young in the in the, in the the leagues that I mentioned, and uh, we'll, we'll move on to the running backs here. Uh, so running backs, Jonathan Brooks, who they drafted round two, Chuba Hubbard, who outplayed Miles Sanders last year, who was still on the team, Mike Boone and Raheem Blackshear. Now, Jonathan Brooks tore his ACL last uh, November, October, and and he's on the pup list to start training camp. I don't expect him to, to see him for a few weeks yet. And even when we do see him, he's not going to be the starting running back week one. Maybe he's the starting running back on paper, but you're going to see Chuba Hubbard involved. And I think you're probably looking – Panthers aren't – they're not winning this newsflash. They're not winning the Super Bowl in 2024. They would be extremely lucky to make the playoffs, even though I think the NFC South is winnable. But you're looking for growth from this team here, Dave Canales and this group here. It's a young group. You want you want these guys to just be better than they were the year before. You want this team to win six, seven games. That's kind of the bar. And you just you want to see something from Bryce Young. You want to see something from Jonathan Brooks. You know, you want to see something from Leggett, J Jatavian Sanders. You want to see that these guys are working. And maybe 2025, we can start about taking uh, a, a, another leap here. But we just want growth. And so that's why I'm kind of thinking they take it easy with Jonathan Brooks, man. You, you have Chuba Hubbard who could handle a bell call workload last year. He's a good receiving back. He could pass pro. You know, there's a lot to like about Chuba Hubbard as a backup running back. And I just think we're not going to see Jonathan Brooks fully unleashed as like a bell call running back until maybe November, December at the best. I still have Jonathan Brooks leading the team in rushing attempts at 195, 875 yards, five rushing touchdowns. And I do have him as the leading receiving back because that's one of his, he's really good at it. 46 catches, 55 targets, 365 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, I, I mean, we're looking at a good player here. We just need to be patient with him. He's young enough to be able to recover from this ACL tear. He's not going to be Brees Hall down the stretch with his ACL tear last year, but I do think, you know, if you want to draft Jonathan Brooks and say, hey, 
you know, I'm just, I'm not going to use him for the first month. We're going to see how he looks. We're going to see this rotation of Brooks and Hubbard. And, and maybe, you know, by November, he's my, my strong RB2. By December, he could be an RB1 if things are looking good. So he's one of those high upside swings that I like taking on, on rookies here. Uh, I still have Hubbard at 135 attempts, 565 yards, two touchdowns, 20 catches and 120 yards receiving with a touchdown. Um, in best ball leagues, you know, like, Chuba Hubbard around 13, 14. He still looks pretty good. He's going to have some value half the season. Uh, and, you know, if anything does happen to Jonathan Brooks or if he's not looking like, you know, the, the guy that we thought he could be, Chuba Hubbard's going to stay involved. He proved that last year that he can hang. And uh, I think you're looking at a depth guy. If something does happen to Jonathan Brooks again, it's all Chuba Hubbard's backfield because I just think Miles Sanders doesn't have it. There's a legit chance Miles Sanders could be cut. This year, I don't think anyone's going to trade for him in that contract, but if the Panthers want it off the books, they could easily cut him. I'd have to look up the numbers and see what that means, but uh, I have Sanders as the RB3, 40 carries, 145 yards. Mike Boone's there. Like Mike Boone could be the RB3 if they let Sanders go, and then I actually I still like Raheem Blackshear as a change of pace back, but uh, if we're talking Sanders, Boone, Blackshear, something went wrong with Brooks and Hubbard, uh, I, I think you're looking at you know a one-two punch where by the end of the season – you know, it's probably a two-thirds split in favor of Jonathan Brooks. And and hopefully, you know, you're taking Jonathan Brooks in Dynasty Leagues. Hopefully he's he's your RB1 starting in 2025. Uh, we'll show you guys where I have these running backs ranked real quick. I have – where is he? Jonathan Brooks is my RB21. And Chuba – Chuba is – where is he? Down here at RB49. So I don't have him getting a lot of touchdowns, but I think, you know, he's going to have some some weekly play every every game, you know, whether he gets six to eight carries and a catch or two. Uh, so Brooks, you're drafting as your running back too, but be plan to not use him in your lineup the first month of football, I would say. You want Brooks as your RB3, not your RB2 on draft day, and just allow him to move into the lineup when he's ready. Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard could be your RB2 week one, honestly. I think he's going to be the guy that gets the most work. Uh, that's not the best thing, but in a zero running back build, you can toss in Hubbard and see what happens. Uh, but we spent enough time talking on the RBs. Let's go over to the wide receivers. We're talking Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Mingo, Terrace Marshall, and David Moore. On paper, this looks okay. I think adding Deontay Johnson is a huge win for Bryce Young. He's a guy that's dominated at the ESPN Open Score, their analytics department. He's, he's continuously one of the top 10 receivers at getting open. And last year, they didn't have a single receiver that could get open. It was Adam Thielen. Again, 32-year-old Adam Thielen was their guy getting open. And now Deontay Johnson is going to lead the team in targets and catches and yards and probably touchdowns. I think, you know, and Deontay really hasn't had good quarterback play throughout his career. You know, Kenny Pickett hasn't been, hasn't been much. And all the other backups that have played at Pittsburgh and going back to, I think, one season with Ben Roethlisberger at the, at the end there. Uh, this, this could be a breakout season for Deontay Johnson. If he stays healthy, you know, I'm looking at 145 targets, 96 catches, 1,085 yards and six touchdowns, man. I, I think Deontay Johnson in a PPR league, I think he's a wide receiver too. You can get him as your wide receiver three. I'm taking as much Deontay Johnson as I can. And even if Bryce Young's not good, like – Adam Thielen had some really balling weeks last year to start the season. And now if we're putting Deontay Johnson as the lead target man for the full season, he's young enough to sustain a whole year. And this team's, you know, they're going to be lucky to win. Like we said, five, six, seven, eight games. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. So I think Deontay Johnson is a smash wherever you can get him. Adam Thielen at wide receiver two, 75 catches, 115 targets, 775 yards and four touchdowns. I'm not really touching Adam Thielen. You know, this is a guy that I wouldn't mind on my bench. You know, but like, are you going to start him week one as your wide receiver three flex? Probably not. Honestly, he's going to have most value in September and October, and he'll probably fizzle as he gets older into the season. Uh, but I, I just, I don't want Adam Thielen on my team. I think I'd rather take a shot on Xavier Leggett, who I have being uh, an interesting player, a role player for the Panthers this year. Forty-six receptions, eighty targets, six hundred twenty-five yards, and three touchdowns. If they can figure out how to get him involved early, especially early in the season, and, and be a downfield threat and get the ball in his hands quickly, let him do some Debo stuff. Leggett, he's a fun specimen, man. I think he's he's a poor man's, you know, DK Metcalf, AJ Brown. He's built just like them, and and he can do a lot of things. Now he's a fifth-year breakout. Uh, you know, over at, uh, is it, was it Arkansas, Southern Carolina, Southern Carolina. Uh, so he's an upside play. You can draft him 
one of your last picks in a redraft league and see if he hits week one or week two. I think he's going to be on the field a lot. I think Jonathan Mingo, David or Terrace Marshall Jr., these guys are toast. I'm, I still like Jonathan Mingo as a talent. I just want to see him used properly and move into like the inside slot role uh, where I think he could be used best. But, you know, for us, we're not drafting Mingo. We're not drafting Marshall or David Moore here. So we'll pass on all those guys. Let's look at where I have the receivers ranked. I have Deontay Johnson, wide receiver 20. Like I said, you can start him as a wide receiver too, but if you get him as your three flex, that feels really good. Uh, I do have Adam Thielen at wide receiver 50. And then let's see, I have to go far down the list here to find, where is that guy? Leggett is wide receiver 72. So Leggett's more of the guy that you put on the end of your bench. We'll finish up with the tight end group here. Sanders, Tommy Tremble, Ian Thomas. I think Sanders is an interesting play. He didn't have a great combine. That's why he kind of tumbled in the draft. Um, he, he was on a really good team with, you know, guys like Xavier Worthy, Adnai Mitchell, Jonathan Brooks <coughs> at Texas. And he still held his own. So I think he's a talented guy. Uh, I just He's not the guy I want to bet on in a redraft league. You know, in best ball leagues, I could take him as my tight end three. Dynasty leagues, you can draft him in the second or third round. I think I'm fine with that. But this is going to be an inconsistent position for the Panthers. You're going to see uh, some kind of a committee with Sanders, Trimble, and Thomas. And I just I don't think we're going to care about who the Panthers' tight end is for redraft purposes this year. Maybe, though, like maybe Sanders has a great training camp and he's locked in and he's going to catch, you know, 40 balls this year. So we'll keep an eye on him in training camp and kind of read the tea leaves there and see what's happening. But I think for fantasy, we're just, we're not concerned with Panthers tight end. Uh, so we'll kind of finish it up here. Let's do our final thoughts. I think the Panthers are going to be okay. I, I think a lot of panic about Bryce Young's rookie year. They finally started making some, some players to surround him. That makes sense. I think they're still a player or two away. They need to keep building that offensive lineup, but I think you're going to see progress. Even if they win four or five games, that's doubling up what they did last year. I just, I want to see Bryce Young upright. I want to see him healthy. I want to see him making good throws on time. And I want to see him, you know, in the 64 to 65% completion percentage. Obviously if he does better, that's better. Uh, but I, I want to see him improve. I want to see a healthy Jonathan Brooks. I want to see him stay healthy throughout the whole year. Again, they're not going to the Super Bowl this year. They're not going to the playoffs this year. So why come out and give Jonathan Brooks 25 carries right away his rookie year first year back from acl injury so that's why i do think chuba hubbard's going to be involved all season um so i'm kind of i'm kind of talking myself out of jonathan brooks in a redraft league i just again logically it makes sense to hold on to him and make sure he's ready for 2025 the guy that does make sense if you're going to draft a panther and redraft it's deontay johnson he's going to be the guy that that they paid for him they traded for him He's going to get the ball as much as he can handle. So draft Deontay, and that's kind of it. I think that's it for the Panthers for me. I'm targeting Deontay Johnson. You can take sprinkles of Chuba. You can take sprinkles of Jonathan Brooks. Maybe he'll get at the end of your draft. But otherwise, let's just let's just watch the Panthers this year and see what see what happens. I think, I think they could be a team that is trending in the right direction. They're still a draft away from being – I think relevant in the NFC race, but I, I want to give hope for, for Bryce. And I'm going to leave that candle lit for him. Uh, but that's it there, guys. You guys can check out the other videos at the comment below, uh, the, the projections playlist. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight and watching uh, watching the program. We'll continue with the New Orleans Saints next and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I'm going to try and pump those out tonight and keep posting them throughout the week. But either way, thank you for your time. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.